In this video, we are going to discuss fraction. And what is fraction? Fraction is a part of a whole number, or you can define fraction as a part of a set. So, at that point, we can represent fraction as a, a numerator dividing a denominator. This is what we call a numerator. A numerator. And this is denominator. So whenever you see something on top, that is called numerator. And when you see anyone down, it's called denominator. So if I have 2 over 3, 2 is the numerator, 3 is the denominator. Just take note of it. And fraction is expressed as a numerator dividing a denominator. So the first thing I want you to note is the definition of fraction, which I said is the part of a whole number. Or you can define fraction as a part of a set. All right. So, and our second thing I said is that fraction is expressed as a numerator dividing a denominator. So the next phase I want to consider is the properties of fraction. We have what we call the proper fraction. Proper fraction. I'm talking about the types. Of fraction. The first one is proper fraction. We have improper fraction and we have mixed fraction. We also have another one called the decimal fraction but in this video I'm not going to discuss decimal fraction so we're going to discuss these three in a moment all right proper fraction is defined as when a numerator is lesser than a denominator for example if i have two over five this is numerator and it's lesser than the denominator you can see that two is lesser than this particular denominator and this is called proper proper something that is balanced you can see that five can comfortably carry two that's what it means that it is balanced so that is an example another one it can be one over two it's an example of proper something that is balanced it is also proper that we have 100 over 200 that's also proper even if i have 15 divided by 37 is also proper because the smaller number stays on top and the bigger number stays under that's what is called proper fraction the next one we're going to look into is improper fraction improper fraction is the reverse of proper fraction so it is when a numerator is greater than the denominator if i have seven over two this is improper two cannot carry seven that's why we call it improper fraction. All right. So if I have 13 over 12, it is improper because the numerator is greater than the denominator. So that is what improper fraction is all about. In the next video, I'm going to also teach you how to convert from improper fraction to mixed fraction and how to convert from mixed fraction to improper fraction. That will be done in the next video. All right. So the last one I'm going to discuss before we solve the listed problem here is mixed fraction. Mixed fraction comes as a result of we not able to, or in the process of we balancing the improper fraction or introduce or call mixed fraction. So I'm going to show you the shape of a mixed fraction. Then I have two whole number, one over three. This is the shape of two whole, uh, what we call mixed fraction. All right. If I have five whole number one or let's say two over seven this is an example these are examples of what we call mixed fraction all right and i told you in the next video i'm going to show you how to convert from mixed fraction to improper fraction and from improper fraction back to mixed fraction that will be done but this video is going to base on is based on solving this problem and that comes under what we call the properties of a fraction. 
Under properties of a fraction, we have addition of fraction, we have subtraction of fraction, we have division of fraction, we have multiplication of fraction. Addition of fraction, I'll be fast about this. All right, this is fraction. We have subtraction of fraction. We have multiplication. Multiplication of fraction. And we have division of fraction. So in the video that I'll be showing you how to convert from mixed fraction to improper, from improper to mixed fraction, I will also solve much problem that we introduce us to the concept of board mass, all right? But in this case, let's just know how we can work on this. The first and the second question uses addition of fraction. Addition of fraction basically talks about when two fractions are added together. For example, the first question here is two over, sorry, we have 3 over 5 plus 2 over 7. So, how do we solve this problem? It's simple. Basically, you'll be taught that. I want to show you the simplest way to solve this problem. Instead of you having to do this first method. First method. In this first method, the LCM of this 5 and 7 is multiplying 5 by 7. Uh, which is 35 All right then you say 5 goes into 35 how many times or you can either you can also reverse it to 35 divide divide by 5 you can just say it is how many times seven times or you say 5 goes into how many five do you have into in 35 that is 7 5 5 10 15 20 25 30 35 okay so that's seven times multiply by 3 and that will give you 21 plus 5 7 goes into 35 how many 7 do you have in 35 that is 5 7s so that's 5 multiplied by 2 will give you 10 finally 21 plus 10 will give you 31 and this divides by 35 so this is the answer for this problem and you can see that this is a proper fraction because 35 can carry that one and the numerator is a lesser number than the denominator. But look at the quick method I'm going to teach you, which is the concept of this video, how you can solve this without wasting this much time. And that's the concept we're going to use for others. So if I have 3 over 5 plus 2 over 7, the first way you can solve this is to say 5 multiplies by 7 and that will give you 35. Again, you say 3 multiplied by 7. The diagonals, use the diagonals to multiply. After you must have multiplied the denominator to give you 35. Multiply this diagonals, which is 3 times 7. And that will give you 21 plus 2 times 5. And that will give us 10. So 21 plus 10 give us 31 over 35. Oh, this method makes sense to you. If it makes a lot of sense to you, just pause the video and subscribe to the channel if you've not subscribed already or like the video so that you don't forget after this. All right, let's, you can try this, try this. I'm not gonna solve this, just try this and drop the answer using the short method in the comment section. Let's move on to the next one. Subtraction is this. Subtraction of fraction is just about two fractions separating from each other by subtraction sign. Multiplication, similarly, using the sign of multiplication, division, this. So I will remove these ones here so that we have enough space to solve the remaining uh, question we have on the board. All right. So if I solve this, it looks exactly like this. So you're going to solve this and send the answer or drop the answer in the comment section. If I solve the number six, you're going to attempt this. So let's quickly solve number four. Number 4, we have 4 over 5 times 2 over 3. Uh, just like, okay, in this multiplication, it has, I've not done subtraction, right? Okay, I'm going to do that. Let me finish with this. The best way to do this is quick. It's a, it's a quick one. Uh, 4 times 2, that is 8. And 5 times 3, 
that is 15. That is the answer. What you need to do is just to use the numerator to multiply by numerator, denominator by denominator, you just have the answer. But if you have bigger values, let's say you have 16 over uh, 24 multiplied by 8 divided by, let's use 12 here. Yeah. And then if you try to say 16 multiplied by this, the numbers will be too big for you to work on. So you can still simplify it by saying 16 could be 2 times 8. All right? You can use something of this sort, other 4 times 4. 4 times 4 is also 16. 24, 6 times 4. 6 times 4 should give you 24. Are we correct? Yeah, we should. Here, 4 times 2 is the same thing as 8. 12, 4 times 3 is the same thing as 12. So at that point, you can see that this can easily cancel out with this. This can also reduce this. Alright, what else do we have? We have, um, I don't know, I don't want to reduce this. So 4 times 2 here will give us the remaining one. 4 times 2 is 8. And 6 times 3 will give you 6 plus 6, 12. This is 18. So at this point, you can still reduce it by saying 4 times 2 is 8. And 18 will give you, I think, 6 times 3. Yeah, 6 times 3. That would be too big, too. So at this point, you can just reduce it with the same platform of saying um, 2 goes into 8. That would be 4, 4 times 2 also into 18. That would be 9 times. So the final answer will be 4 over 9. That's how you can reduce bigger number uh, in order for you to get the answer without calculator. All right. Finally, okay, before the last one, let's work on the minus, which almost is the same thing with the plus. Now 5 over 7 minus 3 over 9. So, like I told you, the first thing you do is to multiply the denominator. 7 times 9 should give you that should be 63, all right? And then you multiply the diagonals. 5 times 9, that will be 45, minus 3 times 7, that will be 21, okay? So, finally, we have 45 minus 21, and this is 4, this is 2, so we have 24 divided by 63. So, that's the answer. To this problem okay I've already told you to solve this and also solve this so and you're gonna solve this let me work on this we have 2 over 5 divided by 3 over 10 now this is a division sign what you should do a quick method you're gonna do is this you're gonna change the division sign to multiplication and flip the term after division sign what do I mean by flip invert turn upside down the term after division sign so if i have 2 over 5 here i will change the division sign to multiplication and i will flip the term turn it upside down 10 over 3 so here you can easily say 2 times 10 is 20 and 5 times 3 that is 15. so this is the answer if you are not to reduce it this is improper fraction I've also told you how that in the next video, I'll teach you how to change from improper fraction to mixed fraction so that it balances. So that is, if you've not subscribed to my channel, please click the subscribe button and also like this video if it makes a lot of sense to you. This video is actually meant for students who are in JSS1 down to JS3. You should take advantage. And if you miss this concept in your basic classes, you also would need to learn this quick method I use in this video so that it will help your solving process. Thank you very much for watching. Stay tuned.